a very good evening class 10th the agenda for today's class is we are talking about a chapter 2 of chemistry that is asset bases and salts i would be detailing today's class on the salts the preparation of the salt hydrolysis of the salts and finally the classification of the salts fine so i hope you will be understanding the topic this is seema makijani my channel made to make chemistry easier for you bless you lords it's christmas may you have a happy christmas and a very happy new year to each one of you now salts are prepared when you have an acid it reacts with a base and you end up in the formation of salt and water is lost this reaction is known as the neutralization reaction now the next thing that you need to know is what if the reaction goes in the reverse direction that is you have a salt and you add water to it what would you get you should get back the acid and the base from which the salt was derived so this reaction the reverse reaction is called as hydrolysis of salt i'll be taking an example to make the concept clearer to each one of you now the commonly used acid in the base that we think of is hcl and naoh is the base now when they form a salt what exactly happens the acid loses the proton the base loses the hydroxyl ion and these two combine to give you water what are you left with you are left with na positive from the base the cation and you are left with cl minus from the acid the anion so in your salt your cation comes from the base when the base loses the oh and your anion comes from the acid when the acid loses the h positive so what you need to do is acid loses h positive to give you the anion of the salt and the base loses the hydroxyl and you get the cation of the salt which means a salt is made from acid and a base so whenever we will talk about a salt it has two components it has a cation and an anion the cation is always obtained from the base by the loss of oh while the anion is always obtained from acid after the acid loses the proton so if you are given any salt you can tell which acid and which base is used to prepare the salt which means if you have been given a question where you have a salt given to you for example i give you k2so4 as the salt so what you need to understand clearly is that your sulfate is derived from the acid so you would add the hydrogens to the sulfate to make the acid sulfuric acid and to the cation you would add the hydroxyl ions to make it into a base so if you are asked which acid and which base makes up this salt you need to do nothing but jo aage hai usme oh dalo taki wo base ban jaye jo piche hai usme h positives dalo taki wo acid ban jaye kitne h positive dalenge depending on the valency of the anion sulfate ki valency is 2 minus to neutralize that 2 minus you need to add 2 h positives to make it neutral potassium has only one positive so you require only one oh to make it into a base so cation ka hydroxide anion combined with an h you get the acid and the base from which your salt is derived is that okay let me take the next example this is magnesium carbonate as i said this is your cation and this is your anion and you need to do 
which acid and which base will form the salt. So you will add hydroxyl ion to the cation. So it will make magnesium hydroxide hold twice because magnesium has a valency of 2. CO3 ka kya hoga? To the anion you will add the H positives. CO3 has 2 minus. So you will add 2 hydrogens to make it into carbonic acid. So this is the acid that is required to make this salt and this is the base which is required to make this salt. So if you are asked a question like what happens when this reacts with this? So you should understand acid and base will react to lose water and make the salt. The other way of asking the question could be if you are given a salt identify the acid and the base from which this salt is derived. Let me take another example. Ammonium chloride. Now to find out which acid and which base is required to prepare ammonium chloride, this part you will add the OH that is you would end up with ammonium hydroxide that is the base needed. Or jo anion hota hai, usme H dalte hai, that is HCl that is the acid that you need to make ammonium chloride. What I am trying to say is ammonium hydroxide reacts with HCl to form. This loses the OH, this loses the H, so you get a byproduct of water. What else will you get? The salt. The salt is ammonium chloride. Is that fine? Let's do one more example. This is the example number three. This is your salt. This is the cation. Now you have to identify the acid and the base required to prepare this particular salt. So to the cation you will add the hydroxyl ions. Zinc has a valency 2. So you will get zinc hydroxide like this. To the anion you will add H positive. Nitrate has a valency of 1 minus. So only 1 H. So the component is nitric acid. So the acid that you need and the base that you need to prepare the salt is zinc hydroxide and nitric acid. So if you are asked to write the equation to prepare this salt, what you need to do is you will take the base reacted with the acid and make the salt. How do you make the salt? Acid will give off the H, base will give off the OH. So you would get water. What is the salt formed? Zinc nitrate. Now zinc has a valency of 2. So the formula would be this. Hence you would put a 2 here to make the equation balanced. Fine. So whenever you are asked which acid and which base are required for a given salt, you need to do nothing but you will be taking the cation and you will add hydroxyl ions to it, make a compound. You will take the anion, the negative charge, add H positive to it and make the acid. This will make the acid, this will make the base of your salt. So from your salt you will have cation and anion and to these cations and anions you will add hydroxyl and H positive respectively. You will get the acid and the base required for the salt. Fine. Moving on further to the classification and the nature of the salts. Now whenever I take a salt for example I take acetate of sodium a sodium acetate salt. Now I need to know which acid is required to make this salt and how do you decide the acid? You will take the cation to the cation you will add the H positive. So the acid required is acetic acid from this part. The base is from the cation part so you will have NaOH is the base. Now you very well know that acetic acid is a weak acid. It is a carbon based acid. These are weak acids. What is this? Metal hydroxide. Sodium is a very reactive metal. Metal hydroxides are basic. So this is a very strong base. Now if a weak acid combines with a strong base, you can definitely understand the salt formed will be basic because the basic character is stronger. So your pH is going to be greater than 7 and the salt is going to be basic in nature. Moving to the second salt, 
The second salt that I am taking is magnesium sulfate. Now, to find out the acid and the base from which this salt is derived. Now, this part is your cation. To this you will add hydroxyl ions. So, it will become magnesium hydroxide is the base you require. To this part you will add H that is it will become H2SO4 is the acid that you require. You very well know this is a very strong acid. This is also good enough a strong base. Now when a strong acid and a strong base combine then in that case they will neutralize each other. So we say that the pH is going to be 7 and we would say the salt is neutral. Moving to the third example, let us take the salt to be zinc sulfate. Now, from the zinc sulfate salt, to find out the acid and the base, for the acid, you will add H to the sulfate and make it into the acid. That is your sulfuric acid. You will add OH to the cation and make it into the base. So, you have zinc hydroxide. Now, this is a strong acid. You very well know that the strongest acid, zinc hydroxide. Now, zinc is not that good a reactive metal. It is much below in the reactivity series as compared to your sodium, potassium, calcium, etc. So, this would be your a weaker base. So, when you have a stronger acid and a weak base, the salt formed will be acidic in nature. And if the salt is acidic because the acid that you are using is strong, so your pH is bound to be less than 7. Is that clear? Moving on to the next example. The next example is cupric chloride or copper chloride. Now from the copper chloride this will lead to the formation of the acid HCl and you very well know it is a strong acid. What would happen to this part? This will help you to form the base. This is the metal. To this you will add the OH. Copper has a common valency of 2. So you would get cupric hydroxide. Now copper is a very less reactive metal. Since it is a very less reactive metal, the base formed is also a weak base. Now when these two combine, then in that case, the salt which will be resulting out of these two will definitely be acidic because you are having a strong acid at a weak base. And for acidic salts, the pH is going to be less than 7. Is that clear? Moving further ahead, I will do a few more examples so that you are a master of this subject or particularly this topic. The next salt is sodium carbonate. Now, when I take this, I add H to it, I get the acid as H2CO3 called as the carbonic acid. Since it is again a carbon acid, so what would be? It would be a weak acid. All carbon containing acids are weak acids. And all bases are metal hydroxides. More reactive the metal, stronger base it would be. Now coming to this part, your sodium will lead to the formation of the basic identity by forming, combining with OH. You very well know sodium is one of the reactive metals. So this is a strong base. Now when the salts will combine, what do you think will be the nature of the salt? A weak acid and a strong base. What would be the nature? Please think about it. Stop for a minute, pause the video, do complete these yourself and then check on my video. Now since the base is stronger, so the nature of the salt is going to be basic. Since it is a basic salt, therefore the pH is going to be greater than 7. Is that okay? The next example is potassium chloride forming the acid and the base. You to the metal, you add the OH, you get KOH. You very well know potassium is a highly reactive metal. So the base formed is a strong base. Add hydrogens to the Cl and make it into an acid that is HCl. You also know this is also a strong acid. Now when a strong acid and a strong base combine with each other, they will neutralize themselves. Since it becomes neutral because they neutralize none of them is stronger so your pH also is going to be 7. Is that clear? The next salt is 
sodium sulfate. Now, in this case again, sodium will take up the OH to become NaOH. Sulfate, you will take H hydrogens with sulfate, you will get H2SO4. This is a strong acid. This is a strong base. So your salt is going to be neutral, of course. And the pH is going to be 7, of course. A 7 pH is an indication of neutral salt. My last example is ferric chloride, FeCl3. Now, if I try to make the base out of this, I end up in FeOH whole thrice because it is ferric and your Cl will give me HCl. You very well know this is a strong acid and iron is a low reactive metal in the reactivity series. So the metal hydroxide is going to be a weak metal hydroxide. So it will be less basic. So it is a weak base. Now when you have a strong acid and a weak base, so your salt is going to be acidic in nature. So ferric chloride has an acidic nature salt. Since the nature is acidic, the pH is going to be less than 7. I hope the topic is clear. We have ended the class of the classification of salts. We have identified the salts as basic, neutral and acidic etc. So you just need to remember two things. From whatever salt is given to you, the cation of the salt, yani jo pehle aa hai, add OH to it, make it a base. The anion of the salt, that is the one which is behind it, just add H positive it and you will get the acid. Just a quick recap. Whatever is your salt, the first part is your cation and to this cation, you need to add the OH ions and it will become a base. To the anion, you will get an acid from the anion by you will be adding H positive to it and you will get the acid. So for any given salt, you can identify the acid and the base from which the salt is made and the nature of the salt, the pH of the salt. I hope you are understanding the concept of salts and I tried to make this concept easier. This is one of the important concepts of class 10. All of you do awesomely well in boards. We are all waiting for the date sheet to come. It is around the corner of this year and normally CBSE gives you the date sheet in this month end. All the best. Do well in life. Bless you loads. Stay safe. Stay inside. Take good care of yourselves. Bye.